Hi, and welcome to the NRF Connect SDK hands-on video series. The NRF Connect SDK is a comprehensive, modular, and scalable software development kit for building IoT applications. It provides all the essential building blocks for IoT applications and offers an unprecedented level of modularity, scalability, and portability. In this hands-on video series, we will first explore a type of an IoT application, which we will refer to as a typical Bluetooth low energy application. And then throughout this video series, we will build this application from the ground up to demonstrate how the NRF Connect SDK can expedite the development of such an application in a very short period of time while maintaining a high level of scalability and portability. Okay then, let's dig right into it. So let's take a uh a brief look on this typical Bluetooth low energy application to understand what we're doing in this video series. Simply put, what are the usual features found in a standard Bluetooth uh, LA application? At the heart of this application, we see the wireless SOC system on chip, which connects to various onboard components, such as LEDs, buttons, and sensors. And these sensors, whether they are environmental or motion-based, uh, provide data that the SOC gathers, processes, and, and stores in non-volatile memory. The wireless SOC uh, needs to establish a wireless connection with an external Bluetooth uh, low energy capable device, like a smartphone. This wireless connection allows access to both real-time and historical data. Additionally, it enables control over the system through this wireless uh, connection. A typical Bluetooth LE application is usually designed for low power consumption, enable it to operate efficiently on a battery for an extended period of time. It also uh, should include a mechanism for over-the-air update or to deliver bug fixes and security patches. We will start uh, the development uh, of this application by integrating Bluetooth LE connection functionality. Initially, this functionality will enable us to wirelessly control uh, the LEDs and, and monitor the, the button status. Before we start developing the application, let's discuss Bluetooth Low Energy support in NRF Connect SDK. The SDK provides excellent support for Bluetooth Low Energy, featuring a reliable stack with a proven history of stability and interoperability. Developing a Bluetooth Low Energy application in NRF Connect SDK is simple, as most standard GAT profiles and services are already implemented. These include common services like the battery service and the continuous glu glucose monitoring service. In addition to Nordic custom profiles and services, so things like the LED button service, Nordic UART service, and Nordic status message service. Many profiles and services come with a sample demonstrating the use of these profiles and services. And some samples even include a custom mobile application for testing on the mobile phone side. There are over 100 samples available, and these are often used as a starting point for application development. Additionally, in addition to all of these samples, NRF Connect SDK include full-fledged Bluetooth low energy applications demonstrating specific market use cases. We have the example of uh, NRF desktop, which is for HID keyboard and mouse. And we also have the NRF 5340 audio for audio over Bluetooth LE isynchronous, uh, isynchronous channels using the LC3 codec. In addition to samples, profiles, applications, and libraries, the SDK provides powerful tools like the Power Profiler and mobile apps like the NRF Connect for mobile, which are essential for development, debugging, and testing. And we will be using these tools throughout this video series. Lastly, the SDK comes with extensive training and educational resources through Dev Academy, which will be we will reference the rele relevant lessons during the uh, during our application development. Okay, so now let's start with setting up the uh, development environment and also uh, flash some samples on uh, the development kit uh, we have available. Uh, so I'll use a an, a desktop application called uh, the Quick Start. The Quick Start is a great application to help us with the onboarding so it can allow us to uh, flash uh, pre-compiled applications like the peripheral uh, UART service or the LBS the one we'll be using and also it also allows us to uh, set up the 
<coughs> development environment. And by that, I mean getting an RF Connect SDK. So I have available on my desk uh, the NRF 52840 development kit. However, keep in mind that the demo we'll be developing uh, throughout this video series, uh, you can use basically any uh, Bluetooth LE capable development kit. So any development kit which has the NRF 52, 53, or 54H or L uh, SOC, you can basically follow along these videos and <coughs> And do this uh, kind of like a demo and an application. I'll point out uh, there are specific changes needed for the different hardware like pin mapping and so on uh, along the videos. So let's go back to the <coughs> slides and show you what are the uh, tools you need. So first you need to uh, install an RF command line tools and that's uh, needed for the JLink uh, software. And keep in mind on uh, Linux and <coughs> on Linux and Mac OS, you need to manually trigger the installation of the JLink software, uh, which is bundled with the NRF command line tools. On Windows, it's done automatically. And then once you've done that, install NRF uh, Connect for desktop, and then launch the Quick Start application, which is available inside NRF Connect for desktop. So you need basically these two things. You need to install NRF command line tools and NRF Connect for desktop, and then you'll find the Quick Start application available to you inside NRF Connect for desktop. These are uh, kind of like desktop uh, tools. Okay, so I have now opened the Quick Start application from uh, the NRF uh, Connect for Desktop. And you can see it's uh, saying uh, connect a Nordic development kit for uh, to your PC. I have, I have it already connected, but I actually need to uh, turn it on. So once I turn it on, it will uh, detect it and it will know uh, which one uh, is it. So it knows it's the NRF uh, 52840 development kit. And then it provides us with some steps uh, that we need to kind of like go through. Uh, if you would like to give it a custom name, continue. And here it gives us a list of pre-compiled uh, uh, samples. Or in some cases, if you plug in a cellular development kit, uh, it will give you also uh, the possibility to flash full-fledged uh, applications. Um, so back to the topic we have three uh, samples available here uh, that we can uh, flash on our uh, development kit i'll select the peripheral led button service and then um, the reason is because this is a good starting point uh, as it covers some of the software requirements for our application so it handles the initialization uh, of the bluetooth le stack and setting the device as a bluetooth low energy peripheral and as you know, as a peripheral, it advertises its uh, presence and waits for a, a connection from a central device, such as a mobile phone. That's why you saw there is a mobile phone next to my uh, development kit for testing. Um, the sample also shows how to use the LED button service. So it's an example that uses this uh, custom uh, service by Nordic called uh, LED button service, which basically allows us to control the LED, LEDs and, and monitor the status uh, of the buttons on our board. If you're new to Bluetooth Low Energy and want to learn more about uh, Bluetooth LE uh, connection, device roles, and topologies, you can check out uh, lesson one and two in the Bluetooth uh, Fundamentals course of uh, Nordic Developer Academy. Uh, uh, and, and that's kind of like dive uh, into depth into this topic. Um, so let's actually flash it program. So this is just, uh, again, a pre-compiled uh, binaries. <coughs> flash is complete continue so you can see the the output and the output matches the expected output and then um, if we click continue we need to actually test that the uh, sample works so there we can go to the um, documentation of the sample to see the testing for it so if we click on one of these uh, links it will take us to the uh, documentation uh, of the sample and you can see here uh, what's the uh, expected kind of like um, output and behavior of the development kit uh, um, when flashing this uh, sample. So if I uh, turn on uh, the camera on the development kit, you can see now 
it's advertising because uh, LED one is uh, blinking. And then, um, uh, as you know, uh, we have to, uh, to verify the functionality on the smart for sign. We have two options. Uh, there is the open source application called NRF Blinky, which is dedicated for the LBS sample. And you can download it from the App Store or Google Play as, as well as the source code is actually available on GitHub. And alternatively, we can use the generic and versatile NRF Connect for mobile, which is a great uh, versatile mobile app for, for testing and debugging Bluetooth low energy application. So I have it actually, um, uh, uh, I have it installed on my phone. So let me just open it, open the application. And, and I opened uh, NRF Connect and then uh, on the scanner, I need to scan because this is in a, in a peripheral role. So there are a lot of uh, devices uh, nearby. I need to find um, the peripheral LBS. So I can filter probably by the RSSI for the ones close, and then I can connect to it. And, and you can see uh, once connected LED2 is, is on, if I can uh, zoom in a bit in here. You can see it's it's on, and then um, I can enable the notification on the button characteristic. And when I press uh, button one, you can see the status of the button. And also, I can control LED three. This is all documentation documented, by the way, in the testing uh, of that sample. So I click on on. You can see LED three is on, and I can uh, switch it off. As I want. Let's switch back to uh, the quick start application to finish the remaining uh, steps. Um, continue. Uh, here we see uh, recommended learning resources. One of them is the Dev Academy and then our uh, technical uh, kind of like documentation. I'm also going to provide links in the slides accompanying these uh, videos with the specific. Uh, Dev Academy lessons and, and specific uh, technical documentation that are, that are relevant uh, to what we're doing here. So not, no action to be done right away here. Uh, develop, that's an important step um, because what we did so far is just flashing pre-compiled uh, binary, but what we need to do is work with the source code. So we need to set up the uh, development environment and, um, and also uh, open the source code for the LBS. So we have two options with NRF Connect SDK. Uh, NRF Connect SDK is IDE agnostic. So basically you can work with any IDE, but we have a great um, support inside uh, VS Code. We have our own extension pack that simplified and kind of like streamlined the development process. And that's the recommended flow, specifically uh, if you are a beginner uh, to NRF Connect SDK. So if you click continue, it will basically uh, Open VS Code, so you need to have VS Code uh, installed. Uh, you can just, if you don't have it already installed, you just uh, kind of like look up uh, VS Code and, and download it for your operating system. And then when you click here, it will uh, try to open our extension uh, uh, and install it if it's not already installed. Uh, let's click uh, Open. And then you can see the first step it will tell you is to install the toolchain. So the toolchain, uh, the SDK needs a toolchain, and then uh, you need to install the toolchain and then uh, install the SDK. So click. So this is our extension here called NRF Connect uh, for Visual Studio Code. And when you click on install uh, uh, toolchain, it will list all the available uh, tagged versions. So. At the time of recording of this video, I have uh, 2.7.0 as, as the latest tagged version. Uh, in your case, it might be 2.8 uh, and so on. So pick the latest tagged version and click OK. And then the installation will, uh, will start and it will take some time uh, to finish. OK. so. Sped up that part, uh, the tool chain uh, for uh, version 2.7.0 is installed. Now we can actually get the SDK. So if you cl click on the uh, manage SDK in the welcome view in NRF Connect for Visual Studio Code extension, 
um, you'll have some options. Click on install SDK. It will look up the available kind of like tagged version. You can, uh, we will pick the same uh, version that matches our tool chain. So we picked the tool chain version 2.7.0. We need to pick the uh, SDK that matches that version and then select a path. I'll use the default path and path and click uh, enter. It will take uh, some time for the installation to finish. So we have now both uh, the SDK and its tool chain uh, installed. And we pick the version 2.7.0. We can verify that from here. You can see it's the default one. By the way, you can manage different uh, versions of the SDK. And now we're basically ready to create new NRF uh, Connect SDK applications. So from the uh, VS Code uh, extension, NRF Connect for Visual Studio Code extension, from the welcome uh, view, click on create a new application. You have three options. Either you start with a blank application or your application will be based on a, on a sample. So you have a template that's gonna be a template of your application. Or we you can have a, a workspace uh, styled uh, application. We will pick copy a sample and we, and we will base it, uh, as we mentioned before, on the lead button service example, which is, you click here, you open the directory of the SDK where it's stored, this is the path for it, or you can read this documentation or go directly to where it is in GitHub. Click on it, select a path where you want to have your application stored, make it uh, stored as close as possible to your root directory, and then click on open. You're basically gonna switch to the Explorer view, but if we go back to the NRF Connect uh, extension in VS Code, we can uh, build this application. Now it's in source code, but in the uh, what we'll do in a bit is to add a build configuration for the target hardware that we have. So since NF Connect SDK is so portable, you can basically have the same application run on any uh, basically Bluetooth LE capable uh, Nordic kit. But since I have here an NRF 52840 development kit, I'll select that. 52840 So here, if you have a different development kit, you need to choose it, right? So I'm choosing the NRF52840 development kit and I'm targeting the, the SOC on that DK, which is the NRF52840 SOC. And then uh, you can click on build uh, configuration to build the application and generate uh, the binaries for this uh, sample or application. So the build is complete and we can uh, now uh, flash the application to our development kit. And you can see also the views has been populated now. We will uh, talk about these uh, in the next video. <coughs> and um, we're basically building that uh, LBS sample from scratch. So in the quick start application, uh, it was a good kind of like out of the box because we didn't actually have to build the source code. It's already available and flashed, but now we need to have access to the source code and, and be able to modify things. So if we open the uh, serial terminal and reset the board, you can see the same output that we saw in the quick start. So let's go back to the quick start uh, application to finish the remaining steps. Okay, we've done this part. We have an RF Connect for Visual Studio Code extension set up and the SDK is also set up through this extension with its tool chain. And next step is to install some desktop applications that are uh, suitable and recommended for the development kit that you have. I already have them installed and we're done with the quick start kind of like a guided walkthrough. Let's close it and go back to uh, the slides. So I have a slide here for you for the LBS sample. Uh, it's documentation and the uh, Dev Academy lessons that kind of like show you how the LBS actually is built uh, from the ground up if you want to dig that deep. And we've done uh, this part, right? We've completed and verified uh, this part. And in the next video, we will take a look at the file structure of an NRF Connect SDK application and understand the role of each file as well as how scalability and portability are enforced from the beginning. Then we will add sensors to the project and see how easy an RF Connect SDK make that process.